All right, so the two types of mixtures that you're going to see, uh, one is homogeneous mixtures, also known as solutions, that when they're the same throughout. And the next one is heterogeneous mixtures. Um, and there are different types of heterogeneous mixtures where the particles are really big, like salads or sand mixtures or things like that. But then there are ones that are very small, such as colloids and suspensions. So let's talk about those. Uh, suspensions are mixtures containing particles that settle out if, if left undis, um, undisturbed, meaning that like the particles are so large, um, they have really big particles, they have bigger than 10 to the negative 6, which might seem quite small actually, but compared to like atoms or compared to other particles, um, typically in a solution, which is 10 to the negative 9th meters, they're actually quite large. Um, so these guys have large particles and they are not, nothing's really holding them together, they can be filtered, they actually can be separated out. Um, so types of suspensions that you'll see that you'll come across that you might not know that they're suspensions or colloids or su solutions even. Um, blood, if you leave blood left, under, um, left undisturbed, it will actually separate out. You can actually filter it or centrifuge it out um, to separate it. Aerosols, cornstarch and water, those kinds of things are um, your types of suspensions. Another type of uh, heterogeneous mixture is colloids. Um, colloids are mixtures containing intermediate sized particles held together through Brownian motion. Um, and Brownian motion, uh, which we'll get to in a second, is what distinguishes suspensions versus colloids. So different types of examples of colloids would be milk, um, where the particles are, are kind of big but not as big, paint and fog, where they actually like, stay together, they don't filter out. So let's go and talk about Brownian motion is. So Brownian motion is the erratic movement of colloid particles. So let's say, take this picture for example, we have our two large, uh, larger colloidal um, particles, like they could be proteins, they could be whatever, um, and they're typically repulsed by each other, they have a repulsion, but they might be attracted in other ways, like other things within the solution, or not the solution, the uh, colloid, will be attracted to it. So they have this like constant erratic movement of these particles. Um, so how can we, if we're looking at two, a suspension versus a colloid, how can we like notice that they have one is Brownian motion, one doesn't? Um, well, there's this thing called the Tyndall effect, and the Tyndall effect is that if you shine light through a colloid, you're going to um, get a scattered, scattering of that light. So, for example, fog we know is a colloid. Uh, the reason you don't put your high beams on when you're driving through fog is because those, the, the Brownian motion of the colloidal particles within the fog will shine that light right back in your eyes and actually like affect your driving negatively rather than positively. You'll actually see less of the road than if you, uh, if you put your, low, your regular low beams on or fog lights which are located lower which will then like light up the bottom of your, um, of your driving. So that's the reason why you, that in you know, a good example of real life example of fog uh, and the Tyndall effect. But let's, let's look at it here in the lab. Let's talk about, um, so one of, these one of these guys is a um, colloid and one of these guys is a suspension. So um, if I shine my light through it, my light source, which is this red laser beam, one of them should actually not be able to go through, the light should not be able to go through and the other one should. So let's actually test it out. So we have here, if we put, put this through this side, you actually can't see the light source on the other side. It, the, this is the colloid. The colloid will stop the light, it'll scatter the light and not allow it to go straight through. Um, and this one, you can probably already notice that it's a suspension, it's already starting to settle out, but let's just test it out using the Tyndall effect. Um, putting light through, you can actually see, notice the light actually does go completely all the way through, and um, it's got its light quite a little bit, but it definitely like allows the light to go straight through, whereas a colloid doesn't at all. So those are, um, that, that's an example of the Tyndall effect due to Brownian motion and uh, colloids and suspensions.